In this video, we'll go from complete beginners in Power BI to creating interactive dashboards like this in just 15 minutes. And first, we're going to learn to import and transform the data in Power Query. Then we're going to learn to navigate through the main Power BI features. Third, we're going to create an interactive dashboard from scratch. And finally, we'll learn to share it and collaborate with others. So let's get into it. The first step, if you haven't already, is downloading Power BI. So for this, you're going to go to this URL. Then you're gonna head over to products and just hit on Power BI desktop. This is the free version that we're gonna want and just hit on download free. Once you've downloaded the application, the next step is importing a data set. And for this, we've got this Excel data set, which is basically for Coca-Cola's retailers. Keep in mind, these are made up, but you can see that we've got a ton of information ranging from the region, uh, the beverage brands that they're selling, and some financial information as well. And you can download this data set for free in the video description. So let's head over to Power BI. Once here, you're going to want to import the data from Excel. I'm just going to select on the relevant one for me. Once that loads up, you'll be greeted with the navigator. And if you click on the data, which is the sheet that we're interested in, you're going to be able to preview it over here. And now you simply want to click on this tick sign. And now you're going to activate these load and transform data buttons. The load is simply going to load this up into Power BI, while the transform is going to allow you to manipulate the data a bit. So that's what we're going to go for. And this is going to open Power Query for us. Here in Power Query, you can see the data set that we're working with, and we'd like to make a few different changes. So first, for the month here, you can see that we have it currently as a number, but we'd also like it in text, so January, February, and so on. Now for that, we can simply click on the date column here, and we're gonna go over to Add Column, so we can add a new column there, and down under this date dropdown over here, we're gonna want to select the month, and more specifically, we're gonna want the name of the month. Now, if we hover over all the way to the end, you can see that we have all of that automatically generated. Another thing that would be nice is if we have the price per unit and we've got the unit sold, we can calculate the revenue, which is the multiplication of that. So we're gonna go under add column again and click on custom column here. And let's go ahead and call this something like revenue which is simply going to be equals to, like we mentioned, the price per unit multiplied by the unit sold. And we're gonna hit on OK. And you can see that's generated as well. Up top, you might have noticed that we've got these icons over here. This is basically gonna define the format of your text. So is it a number? Is it uh, in text and so on? So let's just click on that one. And what we're gonna want is simply going to be a whole number. There you go. You can see over here to the right where we have the applied steps. This is basically tracking all of the steps that we've taken. If you go back one, you'll notice that it's gonna reformat it. So just make sure you stay on the last one unless you wanna go back. Once we're happy with these changes, we can simply go over to the Home tab and hit on Close and Apply. And this is gonna apply these changes to Power BI. Moving on to step two, which is navigating Power BI. And you can see right now that we don't actually have anything. And this is what's known as the report view. And this is where you would have any kind of a dashboard or a visual. As you can see, you have the visualization options to the side, but more on that later. Then on the second um, part here, click on that, that's data view. This is basically where we're gonna be able to preview all of our data and make any kind of changes that we might want. As you can see, if you click on a number, you're gonna see a ton of different options up over here. And then to the right of that, you have all of the different columns that you currently have available. And finally, on this last view here, which is the model view, is where you'd be able to link it with different data sets. Right now, we only have one sheet, so there's nothing really to link it with. So we're not gonna cover that. So let's go back over to the report view. Moving on to part three, which is going to be building a dashboard. And for that, first, we're gonna create a title up top. So I'm simply gonna go over to insert, under shapes, I'm gonna select this rectangle over here. Let me go ahead and fast forward how I resize this. Great, let's suppose I'm happy with something like this. Then I'm gonna have to change the color of it. So I'm gonna go under style, under fill color here, click on that. And I'm gonna go for a dark blue, like this one I have under recent colors. If you wanna customize your color, 
you can go to more colors and change it to whatever you want. Then we're gonna want the title inside of this. So we're gonna activate this title dropdown over here. Just hit on and as a text, let's go ahead and call this something like sales dashboard. And you can see it's really small right now. So we'll increase the size to something like, let's say 39. I'm gonna make that bold as well. And I'm gonna align this to the left. But you can see that it's really, really to the left, as in we would like a bit of padding there. So we can actually go ahead and add that. Let's suppose I add 15 PX here and padding. Now you can see what that's looking like. Great. Now that we have the title, right below that, we like to have three different KPIs. So some of the key financial measures, in this case, it could be the revenue, the quantity sold, and the average price. So for that, we're simply gonna go over to this, where it says card, and just click on that icon. All of these are the different visuals that Power BI has available for us. I'm simply gonna resize this. So it just basically aligns over here and we're gonna have three different ones. So this first one under data, this is where we're gonna be able to select all of the data that we want to be included in this card. This, we're simply gonna want the revenue. So I'm just gonna tick on that. You'll see that it activates as a field here. And if you wanna rename this, you can simply double click. And let's say, for example, just call it revenue instead of sum of revenue. And now we can just control C and control V to add a second. And same thing goes for the third. Once we've got all three, we can select all of them. So just by hitting the control key, you can select all three of them. We can change the coloring of this as well. So we'll go over to format your visual. And the color value is this value, the big one, the 8 million which we can change to something like a different color. Let's say we go for our dark blue that we've been using. Below that, if we close this dropdown, under category label, we can change the color of this. This is the revenue part. We can change that to something like um, this blue over here. And hopefully that's looking a bit better. We can also bold in that like so. Great, now these two need to be changed. So we'll change the fields from revenue. Second one, let's call it the unit sold. And this final one, let's go ahead and change this too. And we're gonna call this the price per unit. Now we don't want the sum of price per unit, which is the default here. Instead, what we want is the average, right? So we're gonna go over to that dropdown and simply select on average. There you go. If you wanna change the number of decimals, we can simply select on these two here, then go under format your visual for the call out value. Instead of having it as auto, we could do something like adding two decimals there. Now that's this part done and over to the side, it would be nice to see the revenue breakdown by month. For that, we can go ahead and select on a stacked column chart, like so. We're gonna go ahead and select the month name and we're also gonna tick on the revenue. So let's go ahead and resize this a bit. You might have noticed that one part here that seems a bit odd is that the first month is December, so it's actually not in chronological order here. Now to do so, we can actually change this in the data view. So let's go about that. So right now the month name column here is giving us trouble. That's probably because Power BI is not able to understand that January equals one, February equals two, and so on. So what we can do is actually sort it. And we're gonna sort it by the month. So by this one over here, that way it's gonna be able to understand which digit is which month. So now when we go back to the report view, we can go ahead and remove the month name and simply add it back. And now you can see that it, it's all in order. Great. Then we can change the color of these columns by going to format your visual under columns. You can see that we've got this default. Now we're gonna change that to this blue over here. One thing that's worth noting about Power BI is that suppose you don't like it as a column chart, you can simply click on any other icon and it's gonna automatically change it to that style. So that's one of the nice things here. But for now, let's go back to the column chart. And then right below over here, it would be nice to see something by state or by region. So we can simply select the map. Then we're gonna select the revenue again. By this time around, let's suppose we want it by state. Now we can simply go ahead and resize that. And you can see that right now, these bubbles, which represent the revenue are quite small. So it's difficult to distinguish a good from a bad. Now to change that, we can go over to format your visual. 
and under bubbles here. Instead of minus 10, let's say we go for 10. Now, hopefully we can start to see that Florida here and California seem to be quite strong. Then another thing that would be nice is to have some kind of a zoom in or zoom out button. So we can do that under map settings, under controls, we can turn on zoom buttons. And now you can see that we have this minus and plus sign depending on what we're looking for. Similarly, you can change the look of the map. You can see here that I've changed it to aerial. That's kind of what it looks like. I'm just gonna go back to the row view. One factor that we haven't quite accounted for has to do with different brands. So what we could add here is some kind of a slicer by clicking on this icon over here. Let's suppose that we're gonna have this up top right next to the title, kind of like so. And here we're gonna add all of the different beverage brands. And you can see right now that we can only see Coca-Cola basically because this is way too narrow. So we can actually change the format of this by going to format your visual. Under slicer settings here, instead of a vertical list, we're gonna wanna get a tile. Now you can see what that's looking like. Let me also go ahead under general and remove that background color. So under effects here, I'm just gonna deselect on background. Great, now if we click on Coca-Cola, you can see what all of that information looks like. Same thing with Fanta, and the dashboard is gonna be fully dynamic. One final feature that's worth mentioning is the built-in AI tool within Power BI. Let's suppose that our manager is asking like, hey, why are the December sales so high for Fanta? Well, you can simply right click on it and go to analyze and go to explain this increase. That's gonna get Power BI to calculate why this increase is happening. And you can see right now that it's telling us, hey, the percentage increase and some of the reasons for it, ranging from the types of retailers to the regions and more. And if you're looking for more extensive Power BI material, you can consider checking out our brand new Power BI for Business Analytics course. In our all-inclusive course curriculum, we start with the basics of data cleaning and transformation then we get into data visualization tools like charts, matrices, and more. Following that, we'll get into DAX or data analysis expressions, which is what you would use to build formulas in Power BI. Then to simulate real world scenarios, we have two extensive case studies. One will focus on building a profit and loss dashboard from scratch on Nike, while the other will focus on visualizing McDonald's European restaurant operations. Currently, 97% of Fortune 500 companies use Power BI. So if you're looking to invest in yourself, you can get 20% off our course for the next seven days using code POWER20. So make sure you check that out in the description. All right, back to the video. And finally, in part four, we've got sharing and collaborating. So let's suppose that we're happy with this dashboard and how it's looking and we now simply wanna upload it to the web. We can do that by going to first saving it, and then we're gonna go over to file, go to publish, publish to Power BI. And you might need to sign in here if you haven't already. And I'm simply gonna select my workspace as my destination, and this is gonna upload it over to the web. So I'm simply gonna click on open. And here you can see it's open the Chrome browser, we can start to play around with it so it's fully dynamic on here as well and if you want to share it we can simply click on the share button and from here you're gonna see all of the different options of how you can share this whether it be as a powerpoint file via email and so on if all of this looks pretty impressive and you want to learn more you can check out our power bi course over here make sure you hit that like and that subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one